Hey everybody, this is James, and today I want to talk to you about the Takedown 22 Survival Rifle. This particular one is a Henry Survival Rifle. It is a modern rendition of the famous Armalite AR-7 Survival Rifle. And it's a candidate we're going to be testing today, and we're going to see how it stacks up against another classic. The famous Marlin Papoose Takedown 22 Rifle. Cool. That's still clanging out at 35 yards. It's looking pretty beat up now. Let's take a closer look at these guns. Henry Survival Rifle was made by a number of manufacturers before Henry, but it originated in the mind of Eugene Stoner back in the 1950s, the original designer of the AR-15. This rifle was originally called the AR-7, and it's been a pretty popular choice of backpackers. You can see the safety and the telescoping charging handle at work. And there's the magazine release right there. What's very interesting about this rifle is that despite a mostly polymer design as well as an aluminum receiver, the gun actually still is in the buttstock and it's claimed that the buttstock will actually float. While Henry doesn't guarantee this, we're going to be putting that to the test. You can see the barrel comes out. It's a 16 inch barrel. You get two magazines and there's your receiver. The receiver is secured to the hollow buttstock via a captive bolt. You can see we're screwing it in. It only takes a couple tight revolutions to get that thing in nice and secure. You'll notice the telescoping charging handle which folds into the bolt so that the receiver can be put into the buttstock. But you can see here there's a little key that allows the barrel to be put on. It can only be put on correctly one way and the barrel nut is just tightened right over the threads and you just tighten that finger tight and you'll be good to go. The Marlin Model 70 PSS, also known as the Papoose, is an entirely different animal with stainless steel construction and a polymer stock but despite that it actually comes in at about the same weight and also the same length as the AR-7. You can see the bolt release at work which is a little bit different for some 22s. There's the mag release. The gun ships with a single seven round magazine and there's your manual safety, cross bolt safety. Very self-explanatory there. The Marlin Papoose does not fold into itself like the AR-7, but it does come in a nice foam-filled case, which allows some adequate protection. You're going to get the receiver of the rifle. You're going to get a spanner wrench, which is to tighten down the barrel nut for maximum accuracy. And of course, you're going to get the barrel. But you have plenty of room for extra magazines and ammunition as well. Here we're going to be assembling it. It's a little bit less complicated than the AR-7. I like to pull that bolt back and just slide on the barrel. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be shooting some groups at 25 yards, a typical hunting distance for a small game. And we're going to see how well each of these stack up in terms of accuracy. We're using our conventional iron sights today because in particular with the AR-7, you can actually mount a scope on this, but you will not be able to get the action into the buttstock in, uh, in order to have that. So if you mount a scope on this, you can't really disassemble it any further and put it away. Whereas this guy, you can actually put it back in its case. It does have a scope rail where you can mount a scope and then take off your barrel and just put it in the case so that is one advantage to the Marlin design but a disadvantage of course is that it comes with a little spanner wrench tool that is required for uh, tightening down the barrel to get maximum accuracy 
Now, did I have any problems with that? No, in fact, I've never actually used a spanner wrench to tighten down the barrel nut. I've actually just snug fit it, just tighten it down real tight, and it's not really going to move on me. But, like I said, we have some CCI mini mags, and we're going to see how much accuracy we can get at 25 yards, and then after that, we'll move it a little bit further. I wasn't entirely satisfied with those groups, so I decided to try other types of ammunition because some 22 rifles will like certain types of ammunition. Thus is the nature of rimfire rifles. Here I'm shooting some CCI Blazer 40 grain round nose lead ammunition. Uh, the left target of course is going to be with the Marlin Papoose and the right target is going to be with the AR-7. You can see that the Marlin Papoose is favoring to the left. I did actually zero this gun in several days before with this particular type of ammunition, but it seems that the sights have walked out. The rear sight in particular, it's dovetailed and it is somewhat exposed on that barrel with no handguard to protect it. So in that time, the sight probably walked out a little bit. And that's something to keep in consideration because the AR-7, though it looks primitive, the sights are really hard to move. So that might be somewhat of an advantage. But as we can see, the CCI Blazer did best, but with this Winchester bolt pack way at the bottom here, 36 grain hollow points, the Mod Papoose loved it. However, the AR-7, not so much. Again, pick your ammunition wisely before you pack up the guns and head into the country. So we've seen that the Marlin Papoose and the AR-7 are stacking up pretty well against each other. They're both the same overall length, the same weight, they fire the same cartridge. But the Marlin has a one-up because it could take higher capacity magazines much more readily than those 8-rounders you're going to find most often for the AR-7. I have a 10-round magazine in this one. But I also want to test the accuracy. Now we've seen the 25-yard accuracy is basically neck and neck even though the Marlin has a thick stainless steel barrel and the AR-7 has a steel sleeve inside of a polymer shroud. But I want to check the reliability of some subsonic ammunition. Now, you might have to shoot really quietly. You can see that 22 is relatively quiet, but you can still hear a crack. These rounds are lower powered, so they may or may not cycle in the semi-automatic rifle. So I'm going to put seven rounds downrange, nothing scientific. We have some CCI suppressor, 45 grain subsonics. Just uh, quickly range dump them. Nothing scientific here. Not too bad. The Marlin Model 60 did the same thing, ran those just fine. Next, the AR7. And it was just fine too. Let's try something else. All right, I know what you're thinking. The AR-7 cannot be reviewed without it going into the drink. Well, here's the AR-7. Oh yeah, it's floating all right. Looks like it'll be just enough to get you out of harm's way. So if you drop your gun, you'll be able to retrieve it at a moment's notice. But how about the papoose? 
It's in here, you can hear it rattling. The case has some foam in it, so at least for a little bit, it'll be able to float if it's lost. Let me get out of here. I have no idea what's in this water. It's starting to itch a little bit. Aye, aye, aye. To determine who wins this contest, we really need to have a little bit of a discussion as to what survival is with a rifle. The 22 rifle is not ideal, the cartridge is low powered, and without a scope, we're talking a, an accurate shot out to about 50 or 60 yards, maybe 100 if you're lucky, but really you need optic at that distance. A uh, 22 rifle is good for small game getting, you might even get a deer with one with good shot placement in a survival situation. Now, this might be a game getter, this might be an emergency rifle, it depends on your scenario. You might be a boater who gets stuck on a shoal. You might be a backpacker who's out in the bush and you might wander away for a while. And you might just be someone on a car ride in the middle of nowhere and you get stranded. You just never know the scenario. And both of these rifles acquit themselves very well because of their lightweight, portability, and affordability. But what about the rifles themselves? I went into this little contest favoring the Marlin Papoose for its stainless steel design and overall solid construction. The gun is very corrosion resistant thanks to that stainless steel construction and you can attach a scope to the rifle while still having it in its case and you get a pair of good sling studs in case you want to carry the gun around. But the AR-7 is deceptively well thought out of course. You can store the gun in the buttstock, not to mention the fact that because you have a lot of polymer coating and aluminum in the construction we're talking about a gun that is also uh, very corrosion resistant uh, when it comes to neglect but the Marlin does have some definite advantages its solid construction is one thing but you get a pair of nice sling swivels to carry the gun around if you want to you can also get higher capacity magazines for the rifle pretty easily and not to mention you can put a scope on the gun and have it in the case but with that said, the AR-7's construction is a little more compact. The sights are not as easy to knock off of alignment as the papoose. And I also have to mention that the trigger and the sights are a little bit cleaner on the AR-7, which allow me to shoot it a little bit more. However, both guns have their merits. I highly recommend both. And is there a better one? Well, you be the judge on what you've seen today. But I know I'm keeping both. Thank you for watching.